Hi, welcome to a session on analytical geometry, coordinate geometry, and we're going to focus on the NSC sub paper 2023. Looking at question four, and you can follow me on this question, it tells us in the diagram the equation of the circle centered N minus 12, 5. So if we go to the circle, that's our small circle. And the center is minus 12, 5. So the equation is given x squared plus y squared plus 24x minus 10y plus 153 equal to 0. Go on to tell us that the equation of the circle centered at m, x plus 6, all squared plus y plus 3, all squared is equal to 25. So we have the equation of the big circle. And we don't have the center and the radius, but we can find out from the equation. PS and PR are tangents, and we're looking at the two tangents. And remember, two tangents from a common point are equal. And then it goes on as well to say PR is parallel to the x-axis. There we have PR parallel to the x-axis. It is a horizontal line. And it gives us a point K minus 17 minus 5, which is on the tangent PS. We're going to go to question 4.1. Write down the coordinates of M. So to do that, we're looking at the equation x plus 6 all squared. To find the x value of the center, all you have to do is change the plus 6 to minus 6. And y plus 3 all squared. To find the y value of the center, all you have to do is change your sign there. And you will end up with minus 3. And there we have the first one. From the equation, change your sign, minus 6, minus 3. The next question is to find the length of the radius of the small circle. So we have the equation of the small circle. And you can see I've underlined it, x squared plus y squared. Now, it's not in the standard form of x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared equal to r squared. So our first challenge here is to bring this equation into the standard form, just like the one we have with x plus 6 all squared plus y plus 3 all squared equal to 25. So firstly, I'm going to bring my x's together. We have x squared, and then we have the 24x. Then I'm going to bring my y's together, y squared, minus 10y. And I'm going to take my constant to the other side, which gives you minus 153. Now, we're going to change this to square constant form. And to do that, it's a very simple trick. A trick, And all you have to do is half, sorry, I forgot the x here. You half the coefficient of x, and the coefficient of x is 24 so it's x plus half of 24 is 12 and you square it plus you half the coefficient of y which is minus 10 so it becomes y minus 10 sorry 10 divided by 2 is 5 minus 5 all squared is equal to minus 153 now what happened here is we're bringing two extra constants. So let me show you that quickly. So we brought in x plus 12 and if you square this you will get x squared the middle term would be 24x and 12 squared is 144. Which I want to write that down there for you to understand that. And we go to y, y squared we get y squared on the top the middle term is minus 10y and if you square minus 5, you'll get a 25. So to balance the equation out, we'll have to bring that 144 and 25 on the other side. So if we complete this, now we're going to get x plus 12 all squared plus y minus 5 all squared is equal to minus 153 plus 144 plus 25. And that will give you 16. So from here, we can work out the equation of the 
So from here we can get out the center, and the center will be minus 12, 5. Confirmation as that was given to be point n, and your radius would be equal to root of 16, which is actually 4. And we have the radius of the small circle, which is 4. And I'm going to put it down on the question, r is equal to 4. We're now going to go on to the next question. Which tells us to find the length of TS. So, let's quickly inspect TS. So, TS is a small part between both the circles. And let's look at what we have. We have NT to be 4. We can find MS because MS is the radius of the circle. And you'll notice that the equation of the big circle is given. So I'm going to quickly highlight that. And we have R squared. We do have R squared is actually 25. So it means that R is 5. And in this case, that's represented by MS, which would be 5. And I'm going to put that down in my diagram. So now I know NT is 4, SM is 5. I cannot find TS because I don't have the coordinates, but I can find what is NM. Because I have the coordinates of N and M. So I'm going to use a distance formula. And the distance formula says X2 minus X1 all squared. So if we look at the x value for n and the x value for m, we're going to take minus 12, minus, minus 6 will become a plus 6, and we're going to square that. Plus y2, so let's look at the y values. The y value for n is 5, so it's y2 minus y1. And the y value for m is minus 3, so minus minus 3 will give you a plus 3 all squared. You can type that on the calculator, and that will give you nm, using your calculators, will actually be equal to the root of 100, which is 10. Okay, so we know the distance from n to m is 10 units. So to find ts, it's very simple now. We're going to take the 10. Subtract the 4, subtract the 5. So TS would be equal to take your 10, minus 4, minus 5, and that actually gives you 1 unit. Okay, the next question wants us to find out the equation of the tangent PR. Now you'll notice that PR is actually a straight line, which is parallel to the x-axis, so all we need to know about R, if we can find out what is the coordinates of R, our problem is solved. So if we're looking at R, it's sharing the same X value as M, which is minus 6. And we know that the Y value for M is minus 3. And we also know that the radius of the circle which we found is 5. So if we go down another 5 units from minus 3, we should end up at minus 8. Minus 3 minus 5 is minus 8, which gives us R to be the point. R is the point minus 6. Sorry, I went a little too fast there. So R is the point minus 6 minus 8. And because PR is a horizontal line, we can say Y is equal to negative 8. And there we have the equation of PR. Okay, the next question is to find out what is the equation of PS. So 
So I'm looking at PS. Okay. So we want to find out what is the equation of PS. So we need to know, firstly, what is the gradient? Because remember, the equation of a straight line is y equal to mx. Just take that out. y is equal to mx plus c. So if we look at the line, we only have one point. So it's very difficult to use the gradient formula on that. So I'm looking for a second point, okay? And looking for a second point, okay, so we don't have a second point on PS, so we're gonna try another strategy. I'm just going to quickly erase, as the diagram is looking a little crowded. Okay, so if we look at PS, what we would notice is that it's actually perpendicular to NM because a radius NS is perpendicular to a tangent and NSM is a straight line. So if we look at this, we have N and M. If we find the gradient of NM, then Due to perpendicular lines, we can find the gradient of PS. So let's change our focus. We're going to find the gradient of NM. And the gradient formula is Y2 minus Y1. So it'll become 5 minus minus 3, which is plus 3. There's my X and Y value, my X and Y value. And then it is X2 minus X1, which will be minus 12 minus minus 6, so minus 12 minus minus 6 becomes a plus 6. And if we work this out, we will get 8 over minus 6, which is actually a negative 4 over 3. Then the gradient now of PS, well, perpendicular lines have negative, when we multiply them, they must give us negative 1. Or we could basically flip this gradient and change the sign which will become a plus 3 over 4 because they have negative inverse gradients and we need a reason there that nm is perpendicular to ps so we have the gradient so now we're going to go back to our equation which says y equal to mx plus c and now we're going to find the C value. So to find the C value, we're going to sub a point. We have a point in the line, which is K. So the Y value for K is minus 5. The gradient we found, 3 over 4. The X value for K is minus 17 plus C. And we work that out. You can use your calculator as well. And then we're going to get a value for C, which would actually be 31 over 4. So we're going to multiply these two together and then take it on the other side. And finally, we will get C, which is equal to 31 over 4. And now we can come out to our final equation that Y would actually be equal to the gradient is 3 over 4x, and our constant plus 31 over 4. And that is the equation of the tangent PS. Okay, the next question wants us to find the perimeter of PSMR. So I quickly just want to get the diagram going, just to show you which diagram they're talking about. Uh, I'm going to change the color quickly. So we have PS. Okay, PSMR. That's actually a kite. And the reason is these two are equal because of radii. And remember, we found in the last question 
uh, we found out in the big circle, circle M, that radius was 5, so that we know is 5 and 5. And also, two tangents from a common point are equal. So we're going to try and find out what is the length of PR or PS. <clears throat> so I'm going to look at P. And if we look at P, the point P, we actually know its X value, which is in line with R. Uh, in the previous question, we spoke about R to share the same M value, which is minus 6. And the Y value there was minus 8. So we know that P's X value is, sorry, we don't know P's X value, but we know the Y value will be minus 8. Same in line with R. So X, Y. So we want to find out what is the X value of P. And to do that, we in the previous question, we found the equation of PS. If you remember that, we found the equation of PS. So remember, P is a common point on both PS and PR. So just to remind you of the equation that we found for PS was y is equal to 3 quarter x plus 31 over 4. So I want to find the x value of p. All I'm going to do is substitute the y value, because I know the py value, to be minus 8 into this equation. So I'm going to get minus 8, which is equal to 3 quarter x plus 31 over 4. And that will give me finding an LCD here, which your LCD is 4. So we're going to multiply by 4, we'll get minus 32. The LCD is already 4. That'll give us 3x plus the LCD is 4, which is 31. And from here, we can come out with 3x. Take your 31 on the other side. Give us a minus 63. Divided by 3, we would get minus 21. And that's quite interesting for us. So if we know P's value is minus 21, the X value, and we know R's X value is negative 6, so we can now work out the distance. PR would be 21 units, because the X value for P is minus 21. Take away the X value for R, taking the x values, which is in terms of distance, it will be 6, and that will give us 21 minus 6 is 15 units. So we know that PR and PS are equal, so they both will be 15. So the total perimeter, we just have to add all the values up, would be 15 plus 15 plus 5 plus 5, which actually gives you 40 units. Okay, we're going on to our last question. Just want to erase the board. Okay, we need a clean page for the last question, just to look at what is happening there. Okay, the question reads, they want us to find, they want to find, a, find the ratio of the area of triangle NPS. So let's go quickly and look at NPS. I'm going to just... Sorry, that's a little bit off on that question. Let's try and redraw it. So we got N. Now remember in the last question we said that this is perpendicular. So we have a right angle triangle. And to find the area of 
triangle NPS. It's very simple, half base times height. So if we're looking for our base, and in the previous question we found this, I'm going to put it back down, that PS was 15 units. Okay, we also found in the previous question that TS was one unit and NT was four units. Okay, so if we're using half base, the base there is 15 times a height of five. And there we find the area of triangle NPS. And then they said over the area of the quad. So let's quickly go and look at this quad. And I'm going to highlight that quad. So the quad we are looking at is PS MR. And actually, the easy way is just to draw a line. Okay. And remember that we have two right angle triangles. And once again, it's half base times height. So remember that SM we found was the radius. It was 5. And the other triangle that you see in the bottom has the same dimensions. So we have two triangles there. And the area of a triangle is half base times height. And because we got two triangles, we can actually multiply this by 2. And then we can work this out, or we could quickly just cancel the halves. 15, 15, 5, 5. And we're left with a ratio of 1 over 2. Thank you.